So we're here today at the beautiful Maver Dynamite Hayfield Lakes in Doncaster. We're going to have a cheeky practice and get my eye in for what it's going to be like for the Fishermania final. I have a rough idea and it's just to tidy up a few things in my head now and we're going to give you an insight into how I'd approach this sort of venue in the summer months. Fishermania final is going to be on Danny's Island Lake. There is also Big and Little Adams, but we're going to focus mainly on the Island Lake for where I'm going to be in that final. 82 pegs on the lake, 28 of us expected on the final, all spread around the central area of the lake around the island. I'm going to practice one of the main pegs today where it's normally a favoured area, just to get my eye in for what to expect on the day. We started our session today fishing the Waggler. Um, anywhere between three quarters of the way across all the way over to the island. Um, it's always usually the case on, on the big matches here. When you've got the crowd behind, there's very rarely much caught short early. Uh, everything really backs off into the middle, so it's a good way of picking off the big fish in the shallow, shallow water early on in the day. So my pellet waggler setup consists of two rods, an 11 foot 6 and an 11 foot. 11 foot for most things, but the 11 6 is just for that slightly longer cast and picking up the line quicker. Onto my reels, I use a 13 fishing Creed GT in a 3000 size. Nice and light, really nice drag system on it because I get away with using really light lines as a main line, just so I can cast that extra distance. So the Suffolk's Duraflex line, a key characteristic of it is that it floats nicely, but it's also got sort of a semi-buoyancy that if there is a bit of wind, you can just whip it slightly under the surface, but it doesn't sink too low. This is key for when you want to strike at bite so you can quickly release the line from the water. The most important part is your floats. Con conventional pellet raggler really, a three gram. Flights on it so that it flies really nice and straight. That covers most of my pellet waggler fishing. But a key point is this little DS float, stealth, stealth mugging waggler. It does next to no plop and really is ideal for when you're wanting to fish really shallow or mugging the fish. Um, today I have had a few fish where they did seem to come really shallow but they're a bit funny about the waggler hitting the water. So switching to that with a minimal plop and more of a plop from your 8mm resulted in a lot of quick bites. So my hook choice for when fishing the waggler is a VMC 7016B feeder barbless. They're a great pattern, although they're called feeder, they are perfect for a wide gape hook on the pellet waggler. I've always turned to these, nice and sharp, use the same hook all day, doesn't blunt at all, and it's also nice and fine, but really, really strong. you never get them straightened out. So after kicking off on the waggler, we caught plenty of fish, and I've really got my eye in with how I need to be casting and how the pellet wagglers perform. I've moved on to the pole line. 
pre-fed it a little bit as you would do in the match before moving on to it and by the time I went on to it it was nice and pretty much solid. Um, one rig covers most of my shallow fishing here. It's a 0.2 gram DS carp shallow. Um, I simply put a couple of number eights straight underneath the float and an eight mil in the band. It's really key that my shot is straight underneath the float as here they have targeted every day shallow and they're really really wise big fish. By having no shot down your line you really are sort of making the most of that natural fall of the 8mm pellet. I decided to do a couple of slaps, get the fish interested and then just slowly lower my rig in. they will literally rip your elastic out. Great way to sort of realise quickly if you are slightly too deep and just alter your rig to the right depth. Different ways of slapping the rig or introducing the bait into the swim can work in different weather conditions in different times of the day as the fish wise up to what you're doing. So having a rig set to sort of around two foot deep, maybe even three foot, and just gradually falling past them, they will follow it and then take it. So today I've boosted my fishery pellets with a tiger nut oil. Gives it a nice nutty flavour, but more importantly, it rules out any inconsistencies within your pellets. You want them all to be falling at the same rate, and it also leaves behind a nice slick in the upper layers, which will sort of hang there and linger around for, to attract more fish. As I keep mentioning, the fish here can be really wise. Because of this, I carry a large array of hook baits, from the slow sinking white and brown to the yellow and red, but also just simply a robin red pellet. I just keep a small pot of them in eight mils in my, in my box. Always come in handy for if you're not quite sure why, but you're missing bites or they're not taking your pellet, a quick change can always pay. Right, so a little throwaway line for if things aren't quite going to plan can always be a hybrid feeder line here. I've chucked tight to the island just to see what will happen and to be fair we have caught a fair few fish on this as well today. Not sure it would be the best method on the day as it did seem to be smaller and more carassios but it's definitely another, another method to have in your armoury just to make sure you're catching and ticking along throughout the day. Right, so let's round off the day with one more fish. It's been a lovely day here at Hayfield Lakes and we're going to sign off with a fish. And there we go. Another hard fighting fish from the Maver Dynamite Hayfield Lakes. A lovely days fishing.
Oh, and a lovely ghosty to finish the day. So another great thing about Hayfield Lakes is the variety of fantastic looking fish. Loads of koi and ghosties. Really nice way to end the day. Yeah.